What's going on Wolfpack? It's Muddy Wolf here and in this video we're going to be creating the sixth part of our top-down RPG like game and in this tutorial we're going to be creating a bow and arrow gameplay sort of things. So we're going to create a bow around our little player here um, and we're going to shoot arrows at this guy. Um, so without further ado let's get started. So the first thing we'll do is going to go over to our player and I'm going to change his colour up in a moment but we need to import some new sprites. So I've went and prepared, one second. Okay guys, so I've went and prepared these uh, bow and arrow sprites here. So I'm just gonna drop these in. We're gonna click it and what we're gonna do is we're gonna change its pixels per unit to about 640. We're going to check out it to, actually it's gonna stay at bilinear. Uh, we're gonna change this to none and click apply. We're then gonna swap it to multiple sprites and we're gonna apply again and then hit sprite editor. Now you can see we have these two sprites. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click slice. I'm gonna just select automatic and hit slice. And as you can see, we get nice little boxes. I'm going to change these to their relative names and click apply. Now we have those done. You can see we have an arrow and a bow we can drop into our game. So let's actually add them in. So inside of our play we're going to create a new empty object. Now this object is going to be called hand because it's going to be the hand we're holding the bow with which will rotate around our player. So you could name this whatever you want. Hand is just what I'm going to name it. Um, so let's drop our bow into our player's hand and let's offset it by about 0 0.6 and let's flip the x y here so let's zoom in there you go that's looking pretty good i think that's nailed it now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go back to our player here and we're going to change his color to match a blue color on top of this here there you go so now in our game he matches his bow which i think works a little bit better so there you go so we've got this bow and the hand added in now on this bow, we're actually going to drop in this arrow um, and what we're going to do is we're going to have the arrow at 90 degrees uh, and flip its sprite on the Y axis and then we're going to move this guy to zero off the bow so he sits in line with the bow. On both the bow and the arrow, we're going to set its ordering layer to minus one so it's behind the player at all times. And there you go. So one issue we're going to have is we don't want to see this arrow all the time. So what we're going to do is we're going to flick off this sprite render right there. And we'll only show it when we're going to shoot an arrow. So there you go. Now we have our little uh, bow and arrow set up. But one issue is if we were to start this game, this bow would not follow the direction our mouse is facing. So what we're going to do is we're going to select the player. We're going to go into the movement script and we're going to double click it to open it up in Visual Studio Code. And now, inside of the player movement, we're going to have reference to a couple more things. So, the first thing we're going to need is, well, we're going to set up, uh, for starters, a serialize field. And this is going to be a transform. And the transform is going to be the hand. We're then going to get the serialize field, and it's going to be a game object of arrow. Which, now I think about it, we don't actually need arrow. My bad, we don't actually need the harrow, we only need the hand for this part of the tutorial. We're then going to go into our update method here and we're going to say rotate hand, just like that. So I'm going to copy this, I'm going to go underneath fixed update and I'm going to create a rotate hand function, void rotate hand. And inside of here, what I'm going to say is float angle and we're going to set this equal to a method. Now I'm going to create a utility class which is going to allow us to create some uh, functions and one of those functions is going to be angle towards mouse hand dot position. So what we're going to create is a utility class and it's basically going to help us with some things and then we're just going to say hand dot rotation is equal to a quaternion dot Euler and what a quaternion is, is it's a rotation essentially. Uh, and we're going to say vector 3 and we're just going to say 0, 0, angle. So our hand will be rotated towards um, the angle, which will be the angle towards mouse from the hand position. So let's go and create this utility class. So in our scripts, let's right click, create a new file and call this utility.cs. We're then going to quickly just copy this part of the code here and paste that in. 
And what this needs to be, this needs to be a public static class. And then we need to create a public static float. And we're going to give this the name off angle towards mouse. And then we're going to give it a position, not a position, a... So we're going to give it a vector free called position. And now in here, I am actually just going to paste some code which I use in every single one of my games to angle towards the mouse. Um, I actually got this from Google one time and it has worked flawlessly. And you know, what? I've never, I've never even thought about in it. But I'm just going to explain what it does. So we get the mouse position. So input input dot mouse position, and then we get the we set its c axis to about 5.23, which is roughly the distance away from the screen and then we get the object position and we actually pull it into the camera dot main dot world to screen points what we do is we take our position of whatever we pass through and we convert it to be um, a screen variable and not a world um, coordinate and then we compare the two by minusing the position x and the object x and the y and the objects y and that will give us the new mouse position. And what we're going to do here is we're going to create an angle with using math.attan2. Um, and this function is just going to basically give us the distance between these two. Um, and then we can times that by the math, uh, the radian times, radians to degree. We can convert that to radians. <laughs> so that's basically what this is. And then we're going to return that. So back in our player movement now, this will now be working. And this is all we need to do for this script. So let's go back to our Unity instance, wait for it to compile. And we have a couple of errors. Did I accidentally, one second. So inside of our utility, I accidentally called this player movement. This is supposed to be utility. So now if we go back and we let this refresh, we should lose all those errors. There we go, my bad. And now you can see here, we need to give in our hand to our player movement. So let's drop that in and let's hit play. And as you can see, the bow now always faces towards our mouse. And it's that simple. So let's move on to the next part. So now we need to actually be able to, well, we need an arrow to be able to fire it. So let's go into our arrow and drop a new arrow. So the arrow we actually have on our bow is only for visual effect. So it's only going to show it there. Whereas this bow is going to be the, the arrow we instantiate to actually fire. So let's get this. And what we're going to do is rename this to arrow prefab. And we're just going to set this to three zero just so it's in the center. And we're going to add a, we're going to have a collider or a capsule collider 2D to this. Let's just go in and make this a little bit more better. Let's put 0 0.1 and 1. And there you go. That's a bit better. We could even do 0 0.05 to make it even thinner. There you go. And that's that. We then need a rigid body 2D. And another thing we need to do is I've always been setting these gravity scale on these to zero, whereas we should actually just go up here because this game is never going to have gravity. We could just go to project settings, physics 2D and change this gravity to zero. That way we will all our items will always have zero gravity, meaning they will not fall down. <laughs> so the next thing we'll do is we'll create a new layer and this one is going to be called player. And we're going to have a player attack or a player projectile. And what we're going to do here is we're going to go back to our arrow and we're going to give it player projectile. And we're going to go to our player and sell it to player. And actually, I just realized change all objects. I was actually supposed to change the um, arrow prefab to player uh, projectile, not the actual arrow that can stay as player. So inside of our settings again, so if we go edit, project settings we want to turn off the collision matrix with our player projectile and our plagues we don't want the player projectile to collide with our own player so what we're going to do is where you see player projectile we're going to go down to where it says player and we're just going to uncheck that one so they do not collide with each other and that will just stop any issues we have later on so now we have that, what we need to do is actually set up a arrow script. So we have our rigid body 2D, we have our collider, but we don't actually have a script. So let's add a um, arrow script, which is gonna take all the information in for our arrow. So what we're gonna do is double click this to open it up in Visual Studio. 
And we're going to first start off by just removing these, putting up there, and we're going to say hide in inspector, but we're going to have a public float called arrow velocity. We're then going to serialize the field. And this is going to be a rigid body 2D, which we're going to call RB. And then we're going to have a start method, which is just going to destroy our game object after a certain amount of seconds. So we're going to say about four seconds. So four seconds after we shoot the arrow, we're going to destroy it because after four seconds, it should have flew off screen or hit a wall or something. So then we're going to have a fixed update method here. And inside the fixed method update, we're going to see rb.velocity is equal to transform dot up. So we're going to get the top of our sprite and we're going to multiply it. So this is always going to be equal to the top of our sprite. And then we'll go times that by our arrow velocity. So this arrow velocity is going to be our speed. And this is going to be set by how much we charge our bow. So we're actually going to have a bow charging. So the more you pull back your bow, the stronger the velocity will be, uh, meaning the arrow will move a lot faster. Um, which will also increase the damage once we come around to making damage. The final thing we'll do is we're going to add an on collision enter 2D and all we're going to do is destroy the game object instantly as soon as it collides with items. Now we could leave this and we could let it stick into players and just despawn after a certain amount of time but I kind of want to just get rid of it straight away for now just so we don't have a bunch of clutter in our game. So that's fine there. So now that is it for our arrow script. We now need to go back to our um, arrow prefab here and we need to just drag in our rigid body 2d now what we're going to do is we're going to create a new folder on the right create folder and we're going to call it a prefabs and we're just going to drag our arrow prefab into the prefabs folder that way we can reuse this and just keep spawning new arrows like that so let's just delete all the arrows in the scene right now because we don't need them just yet Actually, saying that, let's drag one arrow in and let's just hit play to see if it actually moves. But before we do that, we just need to change the arrow velocity to be about 10f or even 5f so we can just see it moving slowly so we can actually see the movement. So let's hit play. And we should see the arrow shoot straight up. There you go, straight out of the screen. So let's change this back to arrow velocity now. There we go. So let's just close these. Let's go back to Unity and on our player, also another thing just to tidy up, I'm just going to move all our scripts inside of the scripts folder here, just so they're all in one place. And let's close the sprites too. There we go. So now on our player, we're going to have another um, method, or not method, it's going to be called player attack, so another script, and we're just going to create an add. Now once this script is loaded, we're just going to double click it to open it up again in Visual Studio here. I'm just going to close this. And now inside of here, we're going to need some extra bits. So we're just going to say serialize field. And then we need a game object, which is going to be our arrow prefab. We're then going to serialize another field. And we're just going to say sprite renderer. And we're just going to call this arrow GFX because we need to toggle our arrow every time we go to shoot the arrow, um, the actual graphics. Now, the reason we're serializing fields, I don't think I've explained this, is serialize basically allows you to make private variables accessible inside of Unity's editor. That's all the that's all um, serialized field does for these. So serialized field, we're then going to have a slider, which is going to require us to have unity.ui. And what the slider is going to be used for is our bow power UI. So what it's going to do is we're going to get our bow power slider and we're just going to make it look like it's when we charge our bow, it's going to power up. So in the bottom left, we're going to have a charger that charges up. We're then going to have another serialized field, which is going to be a transform for our bow and then we're going to have a range between 0 and 10 which is going to be a float another serialized field which is going to be a float of bow power so this is going to be we can set how much power we want our bows to have 
Um, and then we're gonna have another range. So let's just copy that with another float, which is actually only gonna have three, which is gonna be our max bow charge. So we're actually gonna set how long we can actually charge this bow for, so we can't charge it for years and then the arrow shoots and destroys the whole universe, you know? We don't want any of that Thanos stuff. If you fired an arrow at uh, light speed, then we're probably all doomed. It probably shattered everything. <laughs> Who knows? I don't know what would happen. No one knows. Uh, someone probably does. I just don't know. <laughs> and finally, we're going to have another float called Bow Charge. Now, this is going to be our current Bow Charge. So this is our max. This is going to be our current. And then we're going to have a ball, which is Can Fire. So once we've shut our bow, the longer you charge it, we're actually going to disable the ability to fire until our charge is worn off, meaning we can actually give a delay. So the longer you hold it, the longer you have to wait before you can shoot again. So you have a kind of... A kind of a choice so you either have to shoot a load of arrows really quickly which are going to be weak or you can charge up stronger attacks but it means it's going to take longer before you can fire the next one so that's kind of the idea behind that you can always remove it we're then going to create a start method and in the start method we're going to have a bow power slider and we're going to get the value and set it to zero so it's always when we start off it's always going to be set to zero we're then going to get our bow power slider and we're going to set it to be max value and its max value is going to be our max bow charge so what we're doing here is normally a, a ui slider is set from zero to one and we're just making sure it's actually set to the max bow charge we set up here so the ui looks correct once we've done that we're going to add in an update method and inside the update method we're going to have some if statements so the first one is going to be if input dot get mouse button so when we're holding the left mouse button down and we're allowed to fire so we can fire we're then going to charge bow oh. we're going to call a function called charge bow we're then going to have an else if which says input dot get mouse button up so once we release the mouse button and we can fire what we're going to do is we're going to fire our bow so we're going to shoot the arrow off finally we're going to have another else which just says if bow charge is greater than 0f we're going to set bow charge minus equal to 0 oh i don't know what just happened there let's carry on uh, minus 0.1f so what this is going to do is We'll get every single frame, we're just going to minus our bow charge by 0.1f each time. So, or we could move it by seconds by doing this, time dot delta time. So what this will say is it will, the bow will go down one every second. Essentially, that's what I think will happen. But I'm just going to leave this, uh, you know what, I think that might be better. We'll see what happens. <laughs> we're then going to say else if... So we're then going to say else, not else if. And in our else, we're just going to say bow charge is equal to zero. So once we go below zero or equal to zero, we're just going to make sure it definitely is zero because we don't want it to be going below it. We're then going to say can fire is equal to true, meaning after we fired, we're going to set can fire to false, which means we can then fire again. And then we're going to say bow power slider dot value is equal to bow charge just so we can see the official effect of it decharging. And there you go. So that is the update method done. Let's create the two methods we created before. So let's say charge bow. Uh, sorry, void, private void or just void charge bow. And we're going to say arrow graphics dot enabled is equal to true. So when we start charging our bow, we're actually going to show the um, arrow graphic on top. We're then going to say bow charge is plus equal to time dot delta time, which means we're just going to basically increase our bow charge every frame, or not every frame, every second. We're going to increase it by one a second, basically. We're then going to say bow power slider dot value is equal to bow charge, so it, we can see this change in our slider. We're then going to say if bow charge is greater than max bow charge, we're just going to set the 
bow slider value equal to max bow charge. So the slider never looks like it's going off screen. We're then gonna create a void fire bow method. And what we're gonna do with the fire bow is no, we're not gonna set the bow on fire. What we're gonna do is shoot our arrow. So we're gonna say uh, bow charge is greater than max bow charge. We're just gonna set the bow charge to zero. Or sorry, max bow charge, not zero. So here, if our bow charge goes above um, the max charge bow, we're just gonna make sure it stays at the top, which is max bow there. We're gonna go get a flow off, um, sorry, a flow off arrow velocity or speed, which is gonna be equal to bow charge plus bow power. So there'll always be power behind our bow, even if we don't charge our bow, but this will determine how much power. We're then gonna say float angle, because we're gonna need to rotate our um, arrow we fire out towards the, well, where we wanna shoot. So we're gonna say angle, utility, like we did before, the utility class we set, angle towards mouse. And now, as you can see, it tells us what we need, which is effect of three. So we're gonna say bow dot position. Oh. So we're gonna take the current bow's position which we're gonna pass through up here and we're just gonna get the angle towards uh, where we wanna to fire to. We're then gonna create a quaternion called ro rot, which is rotation. We're then gonna say quaternion, quaternion dot Euler. And we're just gonna say a new vector three, which will be zero, zero F, zero F and angle minus 90f because our bow starts off facing right and our arrow faces up so we just need to rotate the arrow to always be in line with our bow so it, it shoots the right way we're then going to set an arrow arrow equal to instantiate and we're going to instantiate our arrow prefab at the bow's position with the rotation we get over here, which is rotating towards the mouse. But then we're gonna say dot get component, because what we wanna do is we don't actually need the, what we're gonna do is we're gonna set this arrow variable to the arrow script attached to the arrow we shoot. I know that's confusing as a mouthful, but there we go. So now we're actually gonna get the arrow script. So we can go arrow dot arrow velocity and set it to our arrow speed so now we'll get whatever speed we fire from our arrow which is our bow charge into our actual arrow so it actually moves at the right pace we're then going to say cam fire is equal to false because we've just shot an arrow and then we're going to say arrow graphics dot enabled is equal to false because we want to turn off the um the actual arrow that's stuck so it looks like it's fired away and there you go. So that is all we need for our player attack script. So let's go back to Unity now. Now let's let this compile and see if we made any errors. There probably might be one or two. None. We are absolute pros. And now I've said that is going to be enough for issue. So we're just going to drag our bow into here. We're going to set our bow power to be 10. Our max bow, we're going to set it to 3. Now we can adjust these if we wanted to for different bows. Let's say you had a weaker bow and your max bow charged only 1. Um, and your max bow is like five. You can do that. These are just variables you can change to see. Uh, our bow power, uh, about a bow power slider. We're going to set in a second. But our arrow graphic. So this is the one in our bow. So our arrow graphic, and then our arrow prefab is inside our prefabs. Shut that. And now let's create our actual um, bow power slider. So what we need to do is create an empty. Game, sorry, not an empty game object. We need to create a canvas, so a 2D or a UI. And we can do slider. So you can see here we get the canvas and the slider, which looks like this. Now, this doesn't look much like an actual thing, so let's come out here. You know, let's go into game. We can see it easier there. So in our slider, we're going to set the position to the bottom left. We're then going to set it to be about 64 pixels out and 64 pixels up. We're going to set the height to be 50. Oh, we actually need to go to our canvas and also change it to scale with screen size and set its base to 1920 by 1080 and 0 0.5 there. Just so it scales when we screen, change the screen size. And now that looking, that's looking a bit better. Let's set this to about 400 
and about 75. Let's drop this down and now we have a bunch of different things. Now this handle, we can just delete. We don't actually need the handle, but the background, we just want to hold uh, options or alt and then shift and we can just click this to stretch it to the screen. And we're going to do the same for the fill area and the fill will we'll leave at this. But what we're going to do is we're just going to say width zero and we're going to set its color to a yellow. We're just going to say FFCE00. It's a nice little yellow there. And the background, let's change the color to be a transparent black. So let's set it to be about 100. And there you go. So now, if we go back to our slider, you can see on the UI here, if I start raising this, you can see the yellow bar charges upwards. And that's exactly what we want. So let's go back to our player and let's drag the new slider. Let's rename it to Bow Power UI. And now on our player, let's drag this into there, hit save. Let's delete the arrow prefab we have in the scene and let's see what happens. Let's start our game. And as you can see, we're here. Now, if I click to hold, you can see the charge is going up and our bow's there. And if I let go, there you go, you fire an arrow. So if our guy's chasing us, we can just, we can quickly fire some arrows at him to knock him back, uh, hit him, damage him. Or we can charge one up as he's chasing us. And if he gets too close, we release it and blast him away. Now, we're not going to add the damage to the enemy in this video because the video is now quite long. But in the next video, we're actually going to make sure we take damage and can die and our enemy will take damage and also die. And we're going to start spawning multiple of them. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. It's been a more fun one to do a bit more um, functionality involved with this one. Um, now, for people who are following along with this, I'm going to start putting up my GitHub link in the description so you can actually go and download the current version of the game. Obviously, once this is finished, Finished, it will be all in there for you to view so this will be updated um, every single time we do a video but thank you guys for watching this video uh, if you've enjoyed don't forget to leave a thumbs up smash that subscribe button and if you want to see more then let me know in the comments below if you have any questions let me know in the comments below and don't forget to share the video with all your muddy wolf fans friends whatever they are just the wolf pack all right all right guys thanks for watching and peace out